How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the Oakland Athletics, a team in real life that's actually pushing for a playoff spot. And um, I really wasn't expecting that for them. But let's talk about this team in a sim style franchise and in this rebuild. But before we get into it anymore, you know what to do. Hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new and enjoy the content. And again, in the comment section below, let me know some teams you would like to see rebuilt in the future. I might start mixing in some like one season challenges or um, just some other crazy challenges just to kind of switch it up just from the normal rebuild. So um, just just to kind of have some variety in the rebuild. So let me know some challenges down below. Maybe I'll pick one out for the next rebuild. So other than that, um, you guys know I'm using the OSFM roster um, that I've been using for the past couple rebuilds, the volume, the V4. Um, so you guys know where you can get that in the roster vault. So without further ado, let's just kind of quickly look at the squad because there are some really good players that develop in the future um, that I really want to keep around and let them s develop for a couple seasons and kind of build the team around them. So looking at starting pitching already, we got a pretty a, a couple decent players that I'm looking to see develop. You know, Shamanaya Shamanaya um, is already going to be that ace that we we have. So we're good with him. Trevor Cahill is probably going to be one of those pieces that I let stay for a season then let him go unless his contract runs out. No, his contract runs out. So I might just let him see out the season and then um, let him leave in free agency. Paul Blackburn is a player that I really like. I know he develops quickly um, as well. He usually hits about the mid to low 80s. So this is a player I'm looking to have in our rotation. Frankie Montes looks decent. Um, his walks are a little bit low, which at times can be an issue in sim style franchise but as long as he develops he looks to be a pretty solid player and then we also have daniel mangden daniel gossett um jesus luzardo so we got a um jarell cotton we have a couple decent young players um we do have a couple older players that i'll probably try to move on for some prospects um andrew triggs uh brett anderson edwin jackson players like that to move on to find some newer younger players that can help us for the future in relief pitching we got liam hendricks um, Drew's Familia um, are two pieces I want to keep around as much as possible. Same with Emilio Pagan and then um, Lou Trevino, who in real life is having a phenomenal season. But outside of that, not a lot of um, younger pitchers that look to develop. Um, I mean, we have Ryan Dole, Dole Carlos Ramirez, Daniel uh, Colom, Colom, uh, whatever. But you, you see, we have Pet Petit, who is older, so it's, it's like we have a couple good pitchers but some of them are older that we could probably move for some uh younger players that'll help us in the future blake trinan not too bad he, he, he's a decent closer as long as he performs jonathan lucroy um he, he's probably gonna go um if you guys know why he like blew a game against the astros earlier this year in real life it it was ridiculous he like missed a tag that was uh just it was it was like a ball that landed right in front of home plate. An amazing play to like have the reactions to pick it up and try to make the tag. But then he goes to tag the player that's leaving the batter's box. It was a, such an easy tag. He tries to tag him barehanded, fumbles the ball, drops it, and then he goes to pick it up and throws it, hits the guy running to first, and the Astros win from the walk-off because the ball ends up going into foul territory. And they're, the guy from like second, I believe it was, is able to score um, on the wild throw. So Jonathan Lucroy, even though he's got beat potential, he's in his you know low 30s and he's 82 overall. I'm going to let him go. We do have Bruce Maxwell along with Sean Murphy who should be able to develop um, if we can't find a catcher to help us right away. Matt Olson, we're good. First baseman develops really well. Jed Lowry is going to be a player I'm looking to move, especially since Franklin Barreto turns into an absolute monster within two to three seasons. So I think we'll be good for second base. Matt Chapman, we're set at third. Marcus um, Semyon, probably gonna let him go. Um, he's okay, but he doesn't really develop into a really good player. Jorge Mateo is, I've noticed two things. He either turns really, really good or really bad. So it's one of those two, it, we, we hope it's gonna end up good. Um, but if his potential drops and his rating doesn't really develop, I'll probably trade him to find a shortstop that is actually really good. Um, left field Chris Davis as long as he stays in the mid 80s um, low to mid 80s and he d plays well I'm gonna keep him around we also do have Lazaro Armenteros who could develop quickly so he could be a player we could look out for center field we're, we're need a, a little bit of help Kyler Mo oh god Kyler Murray 
and Austin Beck probably aren't going to be ready for us anytime soon. So we definitely need a player um, there. And Steven Piscotti is good for now. Um, as long as he does well, I'm cool with keeping him there. So that's the roster. I've told you what I want to do with it. Um, my main positions I'm looking to get for like help right now, maybe a catcher, um, a little bit of younger arms um, in the bullpen and also the starting rotation. And then maybe a new shortstop just because Marcus Semyon doesn't doesn't really turn into a good player and then we definitely need a new center fielder so with that being said i'm gonna make a couple trades i'll see you guys once we get those done already trade one we're gonna be making is with the pirates for second baseman adam frazier 26 years old b potential 77 overall gonna be a player that can hold second base position until franklin barreto is ready for the majors who he should be able to hit it by the time he hits 24 25 so two three seasons he'll be ready for the bigs and Adam Frazier can hold that spot until then. Good contact hitter, should be able to hold that spot pretty well. Um, we're getting rid of Jed Lowry, um, as well as Mikey White and Dalton Jeffries, one of our lowest rated um, starting pitchers who really doesn't develop well anyway. So this is gonna be the trade we're making. Next trade we're gonna be making um, is with the White Sox for two of their kind of mid 20s B potential, high 60 overall outfielders, Daniel Palka, who in real life is actually hitting the ball pretty well, as well as Adam Engel, who they're both the same rating. They're about, no, they're one rating off, 68 and 69. They're both 26 with B potential. So um, I like thinking for the future um, with this one because we, we have Boog Powell and Jake Smolinski, but we really don't have anybody that can help us um, that I think will help us in the future. So having Engel and maybe also Daniel Palka, who could be, you know, maybe a bench bat, or a player who develops you know for the future and can help us in one of those corner outfield spots so i think these two players being added also just adds to you know kind of our prospects in the outfield so already this trade we're making with the padres for a catcher that i know we used recently in a rebuild but we only kept him for a season and then we traded him away so we're going to be adding austin hedges 25 years old b potential 79 overall so he's already what seven years younger than luke roy so six years younger than luke roy he's only three ratings off um we're getting rid of luke roy like i said um i was planning on doing and then we're getting rid of also um kyle finnegan who's i think our lowest rated relief pitcher he he is and then the shortstop eli white who is our lowest rated shortstop so i think this is a good trade for us for the future as well it gives us a a good catcher for the future that we don't really have to worry about Alrighty, season one, this is how we're lining up. Boog, Powell, Steven Piscotti, Frazier, Davis, Olsen, Joyce, um, Hedges, Semyon, and then Matt Chapman. I'm actually going to move Chapman up a little bit. Um, I think, yeah, I think I'll go with that. And then I want Chapman up a little bit higher here as well. So I think I'm liking this. We have Joyce, Maxwell, and Angle on the bench in the rotation. I got to move over Blackburn and then other than that like this this is a, an okay an okay bullpen wait where'd my where'd my closer go there we go this is what we're looking like um oh an okay an okay squad um a lot of righties so we may need to look for a lefty at the the deadline but for for right now I'm liking the way we're looking um, we're gonna hop into season one and I'll catch you guys at draft day alrighty so it's draft day and we have the 10th pick and let's see who we get we're gonna go with antonio alvarez the second baseman um good contact good plate vision good fielding decent speed and stealing so overall decent looking second baseman he's a switch hitter looks and he's six foot two so that's actually pretty tall for a second base well not too tall but it's it's a pretty big second baseman we're gonna go with him and it said he was 70 overall already so he could be a player that could help us pretty quick i'm gonna take a chance with carlos crespo here um has just really good projected stats overall so i like the looks of them i'm gonna go with dusty elia here might as well just try to pick up another outfield prospect you never know how it may end up working out well i'm gonna go with harvey smith here um in the third round i think we've already had four picks so this draft could be really good or it might it might be bad i'm gonna go with geraldo nieve here just good hitting stats decent fielding um, I know he's 70 overall, 80 potential, and I usually stay away from those if I don't have him fully scouted. But 
There's not too many better choices at this point in the draft. I'm gonna go with Alejandro Guerra here, 65 overall, 80 potential. We'll go with Alonzo Asensio. Let's see how we did. So. Antonio Alvarez is already a 73 overall. He's a 99 potential, can play left and center. Um, amazing fielding stats, arm not so much, good contact stats, but 99 potential is a 73 overall already. This is an awesome pick for our first, you know, the first pick that we had. Um, Carlos Crespo, not as good for the second, like the compensation pick that we picked up, um, but 77 potential isn't horrible. Um, the next one, Dusty Elia, 50 overall, um, but he's got 89 potential, so he's more of a future future prospect. 80 overall for Hunty, oh, Hunter Harvey Smith, which isn't which isn't too bad at all. Um, and then the rest are kind of pretty abysmal, pretty abysmal, I should say. Um, no one no one looks too great. We'll look at, we'll sign up Geraldo Nieve, but outside of that not not amazing but antonio alvarez dusty elia and harvey smith those are some nice three picks there especially this antonio alvarez already at the deadline we're sitting in last in the west we're 19 games out um and then we're 10 and a half games out of a uh, wild card spot we're 48 and 60 um we lost our starting catcher like first month of the season with a torn labrum which is pretty pretty unfortunate uh and then we've had a couple players here and there that got injured as well. So our first like two months were pretty tough. We hit, we had the injury bug per, pretty hard. Like um, it, it just wasn't that great. So starting lineup or starting rotation, I don't expect too many wins and losses. Um, Sean Benea though, looks looks like he's doing pretty solid though. A 337 ERA, that's what I like to see. Low walks, high strikeouts. Um, and then the run numbers are pretty low as well. Trevor Cahill, he's going down, but like I said, he's not a player I'm looking to keep around. Frankie Montas, um, as long as he's developing, um, walk numbers are a little high, but overall, not too bad. Brett Anderson, probably not a player I'm keeping around, so I'm not too interesting. Paul Blackburn's up to a 77, which is what I like to see. Strikeout numbers are pretty low, but as you can see, his Ks per nine are 35, um, so hopefully that'll develop. Um, but again, not a, not a bad year. Petit is going down, so it might be a t or Pettit, Petit, whatever you want to say. It's probably Pettit. Um, is is probably a player I'm looking to move on from. Ryan Buckter is another player that is actually doing good. So as long as he's performing, I'll keep him around. Pagan is developing, even though his potential has gone down, but he's having a pretty solid season. Um, Jury's Familia says he's going up. His potential is going down. Um, but his ERA is pretty high and his walks are high as well. So maybe while I can trade him, get something from him. Lou Trevino is actually going up, having a pretty solid season overall. Um, Blake Trinan is going down, so it might be one of those players where I try to move as well. And then Liam Hendricks, I moved him to closer, and it seems like he's doing pretty solid in that spot. Looking at the lineup, um, Frazier's up to a 78, which is pretty solid. He's hitting 287 in that leadoff spot. Boog Powell's a 72. Piscotti's okay, having a 300 average season. Chris Davis is going down unfortunately matt olsen is going up which is great to see um chad pender is doing okay in that dh spot marcus Semyon is going up and his his potential is actually going up so maybe he'll be okay for the shortstop position matt chapman's already in 83 which is great to see his hitting is a little low but overall not too bad bruce maxwell's having a pretty solid season as a as our catcher that now that hedges got hurt and you can see Joyce is a 70, and Adam Angle is up to a 70 as well. He's hitting 284 on the year, which is great to see. Um, so it's like it's looking like the bullpen is our biggest issue that we need to address at deadline day. Already, this is a trade that I'm really, 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 really liking right now. Josh Hader from the Brewers for Raul Ar Alcantara, who's 25 and only a 63. So I think it's okay to let him go. We also do have. Um, a couple other pitchers that we can let develop. Um, a player I was looking to move on from in Blake Trinan since he's kind of having a rough year and he's decreasing in rating. And then a player that is also decreasing in rating, which I really didn't want to get rid of. But if he's going to decrease, we can always let someone else take over that role in Chris Davis. So two players that are decreasing in rating and another player I don't think will increase in rating that much more and hold his potential in Raul Alcantara for Josh Hader. This is an awesome deal. I'm gonna do it. All right, we did lose Chris Davis, the home run hitting 
outfielder. So why not add another home run hitting outfielder? And Kyle Schwarber, um, 71 overall B potential, 25 years old for Juris Familia, who again was going down um, in potential and kind of having a rough year. And also James, um, however you pronounce his last name, another one of those pitchers that has B potential, but not really developing as quickly as I would like. So we're getting a mid 20s power hitting outfielder. And I'm liking the two trades we made at the deadline. Alrighty, so this, this is how we're looking for the rest of the season. We got Schwarber added in the lineup. And then we got Josh Hader, who fits in that setup role pretty nicely. So let's see how we do um, come end of the season. Alrighty, as you can see, we finished 77 and 85. Not horrible. Um, obviously, in real life, the A's are doing a lot better. But just under 500, not, not horrible. I was expecting kind of a similar um situation just because in re in this game we're not really highly rated and obviously if we don't have a really highly rated squad you're not going to do good in sim franchise but um we didn't finish last last the rangers did actually and in a wild card spot we finished 13 games out so um let me show you how every division finished um you can see if you guys want to pause it go ahead and pause it to see everything like that so let's, let's see how everybody did i brought up daniel mangden um, and uh, he's he's developing. That's all that matters. He's almost up to an 80 in his first season. So that that's good to see. Paul Blackburn's almost up to an 80 as well. Um, Frankie Montes is up to a 77. So he looks like he's having a, a good progression in stats. Trevor Cahill, a player I was looking to move on from, so it doesn't really matter. And Sean Manea, he's up to an 87. And he had a winning record, which is awesome. And a sub-3 ERA. So that's awesome. Pettit, he has gone down. But um, not a bad season from him at all. Like, that's a really solid season. Um, Buckter, he's up to 77, so not too shabby. Pagan, not a bad, not a bad year. 373 three, three is not bad for an ERA. Um, so that's good. Trevino held about the same rating, but he had a good good year. 273 ERA in his rookie year. 85 innings pitched. That's solid. 26 runs, not bad at all. Haters a 91. I think he's going to be a huge piece for us going forward. Um, a little bit of high ERA. Maybe move him to that closer spot. And then let Hendricks be the um, the setup man. So maybe swap these two around for the future. See how that helps us out. Looking at the lineup, you can see Adam Frazier's in 80 now. So that was a really solid pickup. He hit 276. Boot Powell has actually gone up in some rating. He hit 241. Piscotti's holding about that 79 mark. He looks to be doing a pretty solid job there. Kyle Schwarber's already gone up three ratings since we picked him up, um, which is good to see. Matt Olson's a 77. He hit 30 homers on the air. Great. Um, Pinder, he's even going up. So he's not he's not a little bad utility to player to have, especially since you can see he can play almost every position on the field. Marcus Semien, he's almost up to an 80, so he's even actually not a bad little player right now. Um, Chapman's an 85. If we can get those hitting stats up, this he he's gonna be a monster and then we got bruce maxwell who's up to a 74 already um since austin hedges was out for most of the year matt joyce is a 72 as well as adam engel let's quickly look at um some of the prospects that we had um daniel gossett 73 overall not bad Lu um luzerado luzardo um 72 Jarrell Cotton, 71, and then we got Puck, 66, Holmes, 65, so not bad there. Um, anybody here? We got Norge Ruiz, Norge, Norge, it's got to be Norge, and then we got Jefferson Mejia, Mejia there, as well as Josh Lucas. Um, outside of that, Austin Hedges, man, that was such a like just unlucky thing to happen. We got Sean Murphy, who's almost a 70 as well. Um, Franklin Barreto is already a 73. Like I said, he develops very, very quickly. So he might he might be able to move up. I think he can play shortstop too, and he can. So maybe we got a new shortstop and move Marcus Semien while he's got some value and maybe get like a just a really good player. We also have Jorge Mateo who looks like he's developing. So we've got some really good names down there. We also drafted that Antonio Alvarez guy who can play second. So second and short are pre pretty pretty busy right now we got jeffrey earman ironman ermin who I, however he's also a 65 we, we got some names down here who are pro progressing pretty good um pretty quickly as well 
um center field we've already talked about angle Polka, he's a top 50 prospect now he's up to a 71 he looks like he could help us out next season so i'm feeling like outfield and middle infield we're pretty stacked so let's see if we can make some moves in the off season we'll see how the season ends i think season two we're a wild card team um the astros defeated the nationals um i'm gonna decline any offers i want to get straight into the off season i think we could hit a wild card spot next season i really do arbitration i think everybody will be offered and actually um these two rows will be offered arbitration no one else will all right for contracts you can see hater has a two-year two million chapman two-year three million frazier 13 million over four mangdon 11 over five pagan seven and a half over five blackburn just under 1.3 for two um olsen two for two and montas 11 for four um and then a couple other lower ones that I, i'm looking i'm looking forward to this team i think it's really good for the future free agency i'm not too sure who i'm going to go after if we do sign someone i'll let you know if not you'll probably just see me at the spring training and uh, we'll go from there I found a, a potential uh shortstop in the free agency john weinston so i'll offer him a contract I found this b potential outfielder in free agency once the season started connor scott will give him a we'll give him a selection another one scott lusk another one sean McHenry. an a potential one michael eaton where are these guys coming from trade we're gonna be making is with the diamondbacks for andrew chafin 83 overall b potential 28 years old for nick allen chad pin and also um um Yusmero pettit i mean it's 34 79 we get a younger reliever and it's also a lefty which we do need second trade we're making is another reliever in drew hutchinson from the marlins 81 overall has a little bit more stamina which i feel like we need a long reliever um for Shel sheldon noose um a starting pitcher of grant holmes who looks okay but i don't think he's gonna help us out anytime during this rebuild and also um kevin merrill so for an 81 overall pitcher who i think is gonna help us in that long relief role definitely a move that we needed to make Alrighty, so this is how we're lining up for season two frazier at second powell in centers piscotti in right dh of Swar schwarber olsen at first palka in left chapman at third Semyon at uh at shortstop and hedges at catcher um i want I want Chapman a little bit higher. Uh, we'll do that. We'll try that out. Um, and then on the bench, we got Franklin Barreto, who's a 77 overall. So um, he's definitely going to be competing for that starting shortstop spot, which may mean at the deadline, Semyon is out. And maybe we can actually get a really good starting center fielder, um, depending on how Angle develops this season. I might actually start him over Powell. You know what? We'll see. We'll see how that goes. See how it goes for the season. See if it helps him develop a little bit more. Um, we got Maxwell on the bench as well. And then um, now we got Powell instead of Angle. Um, another player that I'm looking out for is this Antonio Alvarez. It says he's a 73, but if I move him to the majors, he drops under 70. So I don't want to bring him up just yet. I really want him to develop for another season. Um, and then as well as Jorge Mateo. Let's give him some more time to develop. Other than that, um, we do have a couple other prospects in the system. But we're looking pretty good in the lineup. The rotation, Manea, Montas, Mangdon, Blackburn, and Jarrell Cotton. Not bad, not phenomenal. I think this is the starting rotation is now our new area to focus on for development. Find some new pieces depending on how these guys perform. Um, I think the bullpen is looking nice. Um, our lowest rated player is a 78. But we got Hader in the closer spot. We got Hendricks setting up. We got Buckner, Schaefer, uh, Chafin, Trevino, Pagan and Hutchinson, we're looking good. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We're good ratings. Um, so we'll see how everything goes. I'll see you guys at trade deadline day. But you can see we can, oh man, at the deadline, you can see we're five games under 500, 15 and a half games out of the West. This is going to be a tough division to win. So our big hope is a wild card spot. I thought we'd be a little bit better this season. We have had a couple injuries. I think we've lost um, at least one starter per month um for like one or two weeks um we're eight games out of the wild card it's definitely not over let's see how the cpu drafted this year Ooh, joe weir lefty left a lefty pitcher 92 potential really the only player of note um elton shipley doesn't look bad either um but he's 49 overall so he doesn't i don't think he's gonna help us out too much um sean Manea 
is just having a phenomenal year again. Um, Frankie Montas is up to an 83 overall. Okay. Okay. Mangdon's up to, or he's still kind of at that 79. I believe that's where he was last season. Blackburn's a 76, so not really getting much better. And Jarrell Cotton's a 74. So overall, um, not, not too bad. Hutchinson is um, doing okay. 81 overall. Not, not too bad at all. Pagan, 81 overall, so he's going up. Lower ERA from last year. Trivino's an 80. Or Trivino, sorry. Trivino's an 80. Okay. Chafin is going down. That's not good. Buckter's going down as well. Hendricks is an 85. Okay. That I'd like to see that. Carlos Ramirez is an 80. Whoa. Okay. And then Josh Hader, 89. He looks like he's doing pretty solid in that closer role. So maybe we found somebody in this Carlos Ramirez guy. Um, and we can get him involved and maybe move on from Chafin and Buckner who just aren't really performing well this season. Um, Polka got hurt. He was a player that did get hurt. So I understand why his rating went down a little bit. Bruce Maxwell is a 72 still and Boog Powell sitting at that 73 mark. Um, this is the lineup. You can see Frazier's going up in overall still. His potential is going down a little bit, but he's still an 81. Schwarber's up to a 79, which is great to see. He's hit 30 bombs this year. Um, Piscotti finally hits that 80 mark, but I think that's where he's about going to cap. Um, Barreto, 79. His potential's gone down, though. So at least I really would like for him to hit that 80 mark. Um, Olsen, 76. Um, mm, you know, I wish I wish he would develop a little bit better. Um, Chapman, 85. So he's still going up. He's hitting about 300 this year, though. That's good. Marcus Semyon is just continuing to develop. Like I said, he's one of those players that either does really well or really bad. And it's looking like he's doing pretty decent. So maybe Barreto's the player to move instead of Semyon. Hedges is an 82. And then Angle is a 76. So he's starting to develop quite nicely. Alrighty, to strengthen up our starting rotation, we're bringing in Jose Barrios. Um, to do that, we do have to get rid of two A potential shortstops. And I, like I said, Jorge Mateo isn't a player that has gotten a chance to to show his potential, but he's 23. And I was thinking about it, Franklin Barreto is also 23 and he's almost an 80 um, and Mateo's 23 and he's only 74. So that's one of those things where, yeah, he could definitely do the same stuff, but I would, I just don't know. I, and I'm kind of torn and I feel like this is a way to open up um, some of the, the cluster that we have at short and second. So Mateo moves. Weinstein moves as well as Daniel Gossett, who is one of our higher rated starting pitchers, but we do have Luzardo and Puck, so I'm okay with letting him move. We're adding Jose Barrios, or Barrios, Barrios, um, who 88 overall, 24 years old, a potential. This is a really good move for us. We are giving up a lot of prospects, but for the right now, this really helps us. Um, the second trade we're making is, again, we're getting rid of a lot of decent pitchers. We're getting rid of Chapin and Buckner, plus also Jarrell Cotton. But we're getting one of the, it looks like one of the best prospects for pit, uh, closing pitchers, and we kind of need one. Um, Jonathan Scruggs, 21 years old. He's 75 overall, A potential. Um, we do have a little bit hanging over on the trade feedback meter, and we probably could add someone else. But there's, there's, um, I'm looking at it. There isn't um, many many names I'm looking that I could add that would help us out, or just you know would be good for a trade piece. Um, maybe if I can get Mendoza, maybe I'll use. Okay, maybe we'll throw Mendoza as the trade. Might as well. So that'll be the trade we make. I know we gave up a lot. I know we did, but um, now the um, rotation kind of looks like this. Um, we can put that. I'll move down Scruggs to let him develop a little bit more and then um our rotation is going to be a little light but i'm okay with that i feel like this is this is good we have um jose barrios barrios geez jose barrios in the lineup now so like we got one two punch of these guys you know the rotation's looking good the lineup looks basically unchanged so i'm like i'm liking what i'm seeing i'm ready for the rest of the season see how we do in season two as you can see we did have a winning record it just wasn't good enough to make the postseason 82 and 80 not not horrible actually a lot better than the previous year we did finish in third in the west um you can see the rest of the divisions here um we did finish what 15 games out and only six out of the wild card so not a horrible um 
spot to be in. It definitely sets like sets the future to look really, really bright. Um, we did have an injury at the end of the season. Adam Frazier did go down with a fractured shin. Um, had a little bit of a, a very similar year from last year. Um, but let's look at kind of let's quickly look at the the prospects. You can see Puck is up to 69. So let's yeah, let's just look at the prospects real quick, and then we'll focus on the roster. Luzardo's a 75, so he'll probably be mid 70s, high uh, high 70s at the beginning of next season. Puck will probably be low 70s next season. Um, we got Harvey Smith down here, and that's about it for the pitching. Um, relief pitching wise, we got Norhe Ruiz, who's almost a 70, and we got Mendoza, who we got in the Cardinals trade, who's almost a 70, and we got a couple other players down here who's got B potential. Scruggs is a 77, which is good to see. Murphy's hit that 71 mark, which means we could probably move Bruce Maxwell since he has some um, value, and we also do we still do have hedges. Um, Alvarez is a 74, so he's kind of gone down a little bit in rating, but that's okay. Um, we, we, we still have him, which is, a, you know, which means he'll develop. Um, Ermin is there. Let's see who else here. Um, Armenteros is almost a 70. And then we got these two guys down there. We got Eaton, who we found in free agency. He's a 65 overall with a potential. We got McHenry and Beck as well, along with Murray. And then you can see we got Scott, who's almost a 70, as well as these two guys down here. So a couple decent looking prospects in the system. Um, Palka, he's around the 70 mark, um, not developing as good as I wished, but he's still doing okay. Maxwell 76 and Boog Powell 74. Um, Barreto is up to an 80. You can see he's going back up, which is good to see. Um, probably now that he's getting more time, he's actually, you know, developing. Piscotti has gone down a little bit. So maybe while he still has some value, it's time to move on from him. It's mostly because he had a bad year. So hopefully he'll rebound next season. Schwarber, 82 overall, had 44 homers. That is awesome, 106 ribbies. Olsen is going up, which is good to see. Almost 30 homers on the year for him. Chapman, 86, hit almost 300. So you can see his hitting stats are going up, which is awesome, which means he's only going to get better. Marcus Semien, 80 overall. He's only getting better too, which is awesome to see. A player that I considered trading at the beginning of this rebuild looks to be doing pretty solid. Austin Hedges, he's going up. Not as good average wise, um, but he did add some home runs and ribbies. Um, but that was mostly because he was injured for most of last season. And Adam Engel, almost the 80 overall for our center fielder. Um, not the best hitting wise, but he's 77 overall. He doesn't look bad at all. Like I'm, I'm liking the way he's developing in center field. Really, the only one I'm worried about is Piscotti. And then we got to figure out that infield position. See, see if we can sort that out. Otherwise, pretty good for the lineup. Looking at the rotation, you can see Manea, 89 overall, 363 ERA, winning record, similar strikeouts and walks, um, not as many innings, but still a pretty solid year. Um, runs went up, which is a little concerning, but overall decent. Uh, Jose Barrios, you can see a lot less walks, more strikeouts, winning record, under four ERA. Pretty solid season. Less runs as well. Montas, 80 overall, potential's gone down a little bit. Um, so we'll watch it we'll watch it mangden is still around that 80 mark um, but a little bit better from last year as well so that's good to see and blackburn is up to almost an 80 as well so he's doing pretty solid um hutchinson 82 overall pretty solid season for him um pagan 83 overall really good year 261 era that's awesome to see um as well as the runs down from last year um trevino 83 overall he looks to be a monster um really good pickup he's 27 you can see his runs are about the same from last year carlos ramirez 80 overall okay see potential though so he probably won't hold this rating for too much longer hendrix is an 85 so he looks to be like that setup person for us um pretty good year and hater 92 39 saves under a three ERA, which is good to see. And he blew he blew seven saves, but that's okay. I feel like we found the closer. We kind of got that set up closer spot um, sorted as long as Hendrix doesn't go down. But with my previous history with Hendrix, around the 30 years old mark is when he starts to decrease. So maybe we'll find someone else to kind of hold that spot for him. Maybe Pagan, we'll see. Um, but that's, we're looking good now. I feel like we're starting to really rebuild this A's team. We're looking solid. Our rotation should all be around the 80 mark next season. Um, the bullpen should be still, 
you know 80s even higher the lineup i think our lowest player is going to be angle and he should be in the high 70s too so um the bench a little a little suspect but that's still okay we got some players we can bring up in the farm system so let's see how the um season ends let's see who wins the world series the yankees defeated the nationals um and let's just hop into see the off season and see what we get um and what we can change everybody was offered arbitration here already for contracts you can see scruggs got one luzardo got one alvarez and that, that's really about it. Palka got one, Puck got one. And that's really that's really about it for important players for now. Found this B potential shortstop, Damon Dillard. Might as well add him. It, it doesn't help to have, or it doesn't hurt to have um, low rated players. Like Grady Keyes, or Grady Keys. Keyes, Keys, look at it. 73 overall, B potential, 21 years old, third baseman. Alrighty, so the splash I made in free agency was Yasiel Puig is going to be helping us in right field that means we can move piscotti um because he was starting to decrease a little bit but um I, I like this move i think it's definitely going to help us start season three we're going to solidify that starting rotation even more we're getting michael fulmer for michael eaton who looks to be an absolute beast for the future but for right now um, we're kind of ending the near this rebuild and we really need to push for something steven piscotti is also being involved as well as Adam Frazier. We're sending them to the Tigers for Michael Fulmer, like I've mentioned, another really high rated starting pitcher. All right, start season three. This is how we're gonna line up. I know um, we didn't really make too many changes, but the team looks really, really nice. Menea, um, Berrios, Berrios. Oh God, I gotta get Menea, Berrios, Fulmer, Blackburn, and Mangden. We got Hutchison, Montas, Pagan, Trevino, Ramirez, Hader, and Scruggs. Um, the lineup looks really good too. We got Puig. I don't know if I want Puig leading off, um, but I don't. Who who else really could? So I guess yeah, Puig. I guess is gonna be our leadoff hitter. We got Barreto, Alvarez, Schwarber, Olson, Chapman, Semyon, Hedges, and Angle. Um, on the bench we got Polka, Maxwell, and Powell. Um, and then I mean the team looks decent. I'm I'm liking what we look. Our lowest rated player is Angle. You know we got. Like we, we got a really nice well-rounded squad. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We still got some farm prospects down there as well. Um, so we got like Luzardo, Puck, Smith. Um, relief wise, we got Ruiz, Mendoza, Mejia. We got Ware. Um, we got Murphy still there. Who else? This Keys guy who could be decent by the end of the season. Airman, Dillard, Armenteros, Hatch, Elia. Murray, McHenry, Beck, and then we got um, Scott, Hannah, and Lusk. Like we got, we got some good prospects. We've built this team up. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Let's simulate to the trade deadline. As you can see at the deadline, we're doing really solid. Almost 70 wins, 41 losses. We're 11 games up on the Astros. We're looking really good. Let's see how the CPU drafted. Um, nothing really good, but once you start hitting that third season and you let the CPU handle everything, it, it kind of lets they kind of fall off and pick so looking at the starting rotation Manea, 12 and 2 that's nice that's really good um barry barrios barrios I, I, I give up on saying his name not a winning record but decent year fulmer 12 and 5 okay blackburn 6 and 5 369 era okay mangden 7 and 11 5 era not not amazing hutchinson's doing pretty solid montas is 10 and 3 on the year with a 4-3 ERA. So maybe maybe swap Mangden, put him in the bullpen. We'll see. Um, Pagan having a little bit of a rough season. Trevino, a rough season as well. Ramirez is still doing pretty solid. Haters up to a 94. He has a 1-4-6 ERA. And you can see Scruggs. Scruggs has got 40 saves on the year in his rookie season. Six blown saves, but he's still developing quite nicely. Yasiel Puig is an 87 overall, hitting 281 in the leadoff. Barreto is still around that 80 mark. Not the best hitter, but you know, he's developing. Alvarez, 81 overall. This is the guy we drafted with our first round pick in the first season, and he looks to be a pretty solid player. Schwarber is an 80. Okay, so he's gone down a little bit. Olsen's an 82, so he's gone up. Chapman's an 88. Um, Semyon's gone down a little bit. He's a 79. Um, Hedges, 84. And then angles 77 gone down a little bit on the bench we got Palka, um, Maxwell and Boog Powell so okay 
Okay, so far so good. At the deadline, we are going to find that uh, new relief pitcher and Stecken Rider of the Marlins, 84 overall, and um, kind of adding a pitching prospect in Braxton Garrett. We're getting rid of Greg Diekman or Dykeman, um, and then Damon Dillard along with Pagan, who's kind of having a rough season and he's not really developing. So I think it's time to move on from him. Um, Stecken Rider is 29, but um, I feel like you know he he's having a pretty solid season he does have some things going down but um i'm i'm feeling like we we can rely on him for at least this year to really help us get that that playoff position so um looking at the rotation now stick and rider will go there i mean it looks about the same um but i'm feeling i'm feeling good i'm feeling good about everything so let's see how the rest of the season goes and i'll see you guys at, i'll see you guys once uh once it's over as you can see we won 100 games this season 162 and we'll be taking on the yankees it is going to be a tough matchup but this team went from 82 wins last season to 100 this season you can see the playoff picture there we are taking on the yankees so we're definitely in a tough position let's see what we won sean Manea had the best winning percentage okay I, I can I can work with that. Anything else that I kind of see? Alvarez had some of the most at bats, um, along with Barreto. Um, Barreto had some of the highest doubles. Um, Puig and Angle had some triples. Schwarber was one off for the homers, along with Olsen. Olsen was in the mix, and that's that's about it I think for that. Schwarber had some of the better slugging percentage. I think uh, Puig had some good OPS. Fulmer and Manea with uh, wins. Manea with losses as well, along with Fulmer at the bottom. Scruggs, 55 saves in his rookie season. That's awesome to see. Fulmer and Manea had some solid ERAs. We're, I th this, is, this is a good looking squad here. Rookie of the year, Antonio Alvarez. So um, you can see we uh, finished 16 games in first place. If you guys want to pause it and see any of the other divisions, you definitely can there. Let's let's see how the team performed. Let's see how it is. 19 and four for Sean Manea. Um, 2.83 ERA, probably like his best like complete season. Runs allowed, definitely like just that's just crazy. Jose Barrios, Barrios, Jose Barrios. Again, very similar season to last year. Um, did allow less runs. Fulmer as well, 19 and 7, 281 ERA. He looks like he had a solid season. That was a good pickup for us. Under 70 runs allowed. Blackburn, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Like really good numbers there. And I moved Frankie Montas to the starting position or starting spot in the fifth spot. Um, not a bad spot there. And Daniel Mangden. I don't know what to do with him. I hope he would have gotten better, but he really didn't. Drew Hutchinson looks like he had a phenomenal season, a 2.39 ERA. Lou Trevino had a rough season. He kind of had one of those. He only pitched 11 innings, though, so um, I wonder what the deal was there. Stecken Rider came in, 2.88 ERA, not bad. Carlos Ramirez is doing solid there. Josh Hader still doing what Josh Hader does, dominate. And then Scruggs, 82 overall, 52 saves. And he did blow two in the second half of the season, so a lot better um, there. As you can see, the squad, Antonio Alvarez, 83 overall, rookie of the season year. Not not bad at all. Um, he's only 20, so he's only going to get better. Barreto, 82, you know, like similar season. Puig, 89, 30 homers, 300 average. This was a good little sign-in for us in uh, free agency. At, um, Schwarber, 81, he had 45 homers. Okay, um, Olsen 83, he had 36 homers, his career high, um, 250 average, but okay, Chapman 89 overall, you gotta be kidding me, not as good as um, hitting numbers as last year, but still a good season, Bruce Maxwell's up to an 82, Hedges again got hurt, um, but you can see he had a good year, Marcus Semien still doing, you know, very consistent numbers for him, and Adam Engel down to a um, 75, but better average from him similar production numbers sean murphy i brought up um because uh hedges got hurt didn't really hit the ball well in his limited at bats i brought up grady keys as well to see how he would do he did okay in his at bats polka's up to a 78 so he is actually developing um which is good to see and boog powell still kind of hanging out here not the best of season from him um 
I think our main pitcher to look for would be Lazardo. Um, I think he would definitely take over for Mangdon in the future. Puck is there. Braxton Garrett, who we got from the Marlins. We got Harvey Smith there. Um, in the bullpen, we got Ruiz and Mendoza, as well as Lucas. Um, we got this Ware guy who looks like he's going to be a beast. 62 overall already. Um, Hedges was a little bit of a, a disappointment that we signed him um, from the, or we traded for him from the Padres. He just got hurt all the time. Um, Earman is up to a 70. Armenteros, he's 20. He's finally hitting about that 70 mark. These guys are still in their high 60s. You can see these these players are starting to hit their high 60s as well, along with Scott and then um, some other players. So we're we're looking good for the future. We're looking good for the current state. I'm feeling good about the playoffs. Um, let's just let's just hop into it and um let's go let's see what we can do against the yankees i'm hoping for some good results not a good start there um the yankees here game two uh, we got eliminated right away <sighs> well let's let's look at this yankees team let's see let's see what we just came up against where I went the wrong way. I passed it. Where? I passed them. Oh, okay. So we got Stanton, Judge, Severino, Chapman, Britton, Glaber. I mean, that's a good team. I think we definitely should have done a lot better, though. Yeah, we, we should have done a lot better. I feel like we should have beat them. Ah, that's disappointing. But you know what? I'm going to... I'm going to see if we can bring everybody back for four season. We're going to sim all the way through and see how it goes. So season four, I simulated all the way through. Everybody stayed. No changes. Um, we're going to be taking on the winner of the wild card playoff. So that's that's actually a lot better for us. Let's see. You can see the playoff picture. Um, we're taking on Houston or Toronto in the standings. We finished six games in first place. Um, so not as good winning percentage wise as last season. Um, you can see Barreto had the best average and then um, Jose um, Barrios, Barrios, Jose Barrios um, had a phenomenal season there. Um, awards wise, Barreto got the Slugger, Blackburn and Puig got gold gloves, and Jose Barrio, Bar oh my God, Jose Bar Barrios had the Cy Young Award. So let's look at how this all went down. So I brought, I put Mangdon in the bullpen and I put, um, Lazardo there and the CPU took him out. What? Oh, I guess he wasn't having a good time. Okay, well, I guess I'm, I'm glad that the CPU did that then. Um, but as you can see, Jose Barrios, 96 overall, 19 and 7 on the year, 2 ERA, Fulmer, um, 16 and 10, but a 3 2 3 ERA. Manea is our third best pitcher. That's crazy to think about. He went 12 and 8. Um, Blackburn went 15 and 10 and Mangdon 14 and 6. Hutchinson, this is a good little pickup for us. A 2 ERA. Um, Trevino is definitely hit kind of his like down, like decline, um, which is unfortunate. Carlos Ramirez is starting to go down as well, but he had a good year. Um, Stecken Ryder, 82 overall. He's going down, which is unfortunate. Montas, 80 overall. He seems to. He only pitched two thirds of an inning. I don't know why he's there. Scruggs, I moved him instead of um, the closer spot to the the setup because Hater was just it, it's just a lot better for him there. Um, relief wise, it looks like we didn't really have anybody that could hold their own. Lineup wise, you can see Barreto's an 89, so that's why I wanted to keep on to him because he, he just always develops well. And you can see he had a phenomenal year. Chapman's a 92. He had a phenomenal year as well. Puig, 89, 31 homers. I think that's his career best. Um, so he had a great year. Um, Schwarber, a, a little bit of a down year. A little bit of a down year in terms of home runs and ribbies. Matt Olson, similar production, a little bit low on the average. Maxwell was our DH. Angles, a 79. So he looks to be like a decent little player to pick up um, for cheap at the beginning of a rebuild. He was hurt for half of the season um, but he still did pretty solid hedges finally got us a season and Semyon is an 82 um, you can see Antonio Alvarez is an 83 overall his potential has gone down a little bit but I think that's just because he's sharing reps um, which is something I need to sort out Sean Murphy 
um, backup catcher is in there along with Grady Keys who's there third baseman looking decent even Boog Powell had a pretty good year so so far we're looking we're looking decent I'm thinking I'm thinking this is this is a good year for us we have the wild card spot we're taking on the Astros so let's see how we do game one we lose game two we lose again. If, if we get knocked out first round again that's crazy <sighs> All right, let's go look at this Astros team that just knocked us out of the playoffs. Bregman, Correa, Altuve, Springer, Bell, Nate. Okay, I mean they they got a solid team. They they definitely do. But I feel like we 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 definitely should have. We I can't believe that just happened. Two straight years we get knocked out in the first round, and we get swept both years too. But if you guys did enjoy this rebuild, let me know in the comment section below. Hit that thumbs up button because that lets me know that you guys are still enjoying these rebuilds. I'm trying to get through as many teams as possible. I hope you guys like this. I feel like pitching wise, this is one of the strongest rotations we've put together. And I feel like this is a pretty solid team as well. Um, I really liked this draft pick of Antonio Alvarez. I think this might be the best ever um, draft pick that I've ever had besides a starting pitcher that i had in my mariners rebuild if you guys have not seen that go and check it out um i had a starting pitcher who turned to be an absolute beast in the postseason and i think he got like mid 80s for a starting pitcher so if you guys missed that go and check it out because that guy was actually really good i think his last name was like ramirez or something he was amazing um but this guy he, antonio alvarez looks to be a phenomenal player for the future i like that we got him um, I would probably move on Semyon because he is 30 now. Um, you can see in the playoffs he hit 91. Gross. Along with Puig. Oh, come on. So, but, you know, Barreto, 89. Chapman, 92. Puig, 89. Schwarber, 81. Olsen, 88. Um, and then you throw in Alvarez, who will probably be in the mid-80s at the beginning of next season. That's a crazy good team. The pitching stacked. This ace team, I liked it. It's a good team to put together, and I hope you guys enjoyed it as well. Once again, hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and enjoy the com uh, content. Um, leave a comment for future teams to rebuild. Also, leave some challenges because I do want to start doing challenges instead of just the four season rebuild. I want to maybe do like a one season challenge, maybe like do a team of all prospects, see how quickly we can develop them and turn them into a. Um, um, a postseason or a world series contender so leave me some challenges down below if you like the idea someone does hit that thumbs up button on their comment so i know what you guys want to see so other than that guys i'll catch you on the next video peace